Hey, Robbie Lockman with The Harness, and today we're going to be taking a little bit of a closer look at the Falco project. And also, we're going to be leveraging Harness to install Falco and also introspect a workload deployed by Harness. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Falco, Falco is a security project that was donated by Sysdig to the CNCF. And from KubeCon 2020 this year, actually, Falco was fairly popular, representing in several talks. Now, what's a little bit different about Falco is that Falco leverages something called eBPF, or a packet filter, that inside the kernel, it's actually hard to hide from Falco. So certain events, such as changing namespaces, uh, installing certain things, accessing certain modules, uh, Falco will pick that up. Also, like any of the modern projects, you can also have rules that you can assert, and also you can take certain actions if a rule is broken. Now, let's take a look at the Harness side. If you're unfamiliar with Harness, you can log into Harness by going to app.harness.io, or you can sign up for a new account from Harness.io. Uh, a few moving pieces if this is your first time leveraging Harness. The first thing we need is actually a Harness Delegate. If you come to Setup, and you go to Harness Delegates, you can actually download or install a new delegate. Here, I actually have a delegate up and running in my Amazon EKS cluster. Um, to install a Kubernetes-based delegate, it's pretty easy. Just click Install Delegate, give the delegate a name, and also select Kubernetes YAML. And then what will happen is you'll actually download a particular tar gz file with a yaml and a readme text and all you have to do is from kubectl is apply this yaml and within no time you would have an actual delegate running with the delegate out of the way the next step you want to do is actually add your kubernetes cluster as a cloud provider into harness so harness can have access to the kubernetes cluster if you go to click cloud providers and click add cloud provider you want to add a kubernetes cluster and then it's pretty easy uh, in the, the blog, we gave it a name like Falco. We already have the particular Falco Kubernetes cluster wired here, but we can inherit from a select delegate. Uh, the one we just downloaded is called the Falco Facilitator. And then just go ahead and click Next. Now, I already have this uh, installed, and so I need to do it again, but let's go ahead and click Test to show that the test is successful. Next, let's take introspect the bits and pieces of what we're actually going to deploy. Uh, the lifeblood of a, of a particular harness deployment is an application. And so here I have one called Falco is watching. So this is actually a completed example. Uh, we have a few things that are our goals. Uh, actually to install Falco, to deploy Nginx. Also, we have, we're just rewiring the Kubernetes cluster and having two particular workflows uh, to actually install Falco. Let's actually introspect each one of these pieces now. And the easiest way to do that, let's go ahead and just recreate it. So if we go back to setup, let's go ahead and add an application. Let's call this Falco is rewatching. Go ahead and click Submit. And now we can build all the logical pieces that we need. The first step is we need an environment. So where are we going to deploy? Let's go ahead and add an environment. Let's just call this Falco EKS Cluster. Let's go ahead and add an infrastructure definition here. Uh, let's call this the Falco EKS Prod Cluster, lack of a better name. And we're going to say it's the Kubernetes cluster. We're going to be doing Kubernetes-based deployments. Um, let's say we have our Kubernetes Falco cluster. The file namespace is fine for now. Go ahead and click Submit. With that out of the way, let's go back and start wiring in other pieces. So the next set of pieces we need are actually what we're going to install. So if you click on Services, let's go ahead and add a service. And actually, let's call this one Falco Install. We're going to be doing a Kubernetes-based deployment again, which is, in, which is inclusive of Helm. And what we want to do, since there is a help chart, that's, there is a remote manifest we can link to. If you take a look at this particular URL, the Helm charts are in something, a folder called Falco. And we can see this is all the Helm information we need here. So let's go ahead and wire that up real quickly. So if we go to link remote manifest, and since we have the location of the Helm chart from a source repository, uh, we'll go ahead and go ahead and grab that. The branch name is going to be master. Uh, the folder path here is Falco. So we're going to get and just wire that to Falco. And let's go ahead and just use Helm v3. Click submit. Perfect. Now this is wired in. The second thing we want to wire in is actually Nginx. And so let's go ahead and add another service for Nginx. Click submit. Go ahead and add artifact source from a Docker registry. We're going to public Docker Hub, which all harness comes with, and we're going to say library into next. Perfect. Now, the other two pieces that we need here uh, are actually the installation instructions now. So we have what we have, where we want to install, what we want to install. Let's go ahead and say how we're going to install. 
So click workflows, let's do the first workflow. This is called this install Falco. The workflow will be a rolling deployment back to our cluster, Falco install, and then our cluster. Similarly, we'll do the same thing for the Nginx. So let's go ahead and add a workflow. Let's call this install or deploy Nginx. Rolling deployment, cluster, Nginx, and then our product cluster. And click submit. And perfect. Now, the last concept we want to introduce is we actually want to do these in sequence. And to do that, we need to create a harness pipeline, which is really easy. So let's go ahead and create a pipeline. Go ahead and add a pipeline. And we can just call this Falco pipeline. Click Submit. And now we can actually wire in our two stages. So go ahead and click Add a Stage. Uh, first, we want to install Falco. Click Submit. And then lastly, we want to go ahead and deploy Nginx. And so go ahead and click Submit. And now we have all of the pieces that we need to actually run. So let's go ahead and run this. The server ready to run a harness pipeline, but we can come over to continuous deployment on the left-hand navigation. Let's click on deployments, and now we can click on start new deployment. We're going to run a pipeline. We're going to run the Falco is rewatching application and the Falco pipeline we just created. Now we do need to fill in some prudent information, uh, just what tag of Nginx we want. Let's just go ahead and make this latest. And always like say, go for gold. I'm going to blast my colleagues. Go ahead and click Submit. And now we can go ahead and watch the deployment that we're having here. So this should only take a few moments. Uh, redeploy the Helm chart and then also deploy Nginx. Looks like we're all finished. We're actually just deploying Nginx right now. It should only take a moment. And we're all set. Perfect. Now let's fire up Terminal and take a look at what we just did. So let's go ahead and fire up terminal and see Falco in action. So I have two terminals here. Uh, so the first command that I want to run is getting all the pods. So let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, here we have our Nginx deployment and also the Falco pods that are running. Uh, now, what I want to do is to match the node that is running Nginx uh, with the particular uh, Falco node here. Now, there's there were two examples that were from Amazon Web Services and Better Programming that actually run through this in some sort of similar fashion. So, making sure that we're intercepting on the right particular node. So, let's take a look at the logs really quickly. So, we can say that this is our particular Falco node here. So, we can say kubectl logs, and then we can take a look at what was generated. Uh, now, to generate some sort of output that would be for sensitive information, we can actually SSH into this particular running pod here, or the Nginx container, and we can actually touch something that is sensitive. So we can do that by saying kubectl exec it. Uh, we need to give this particular name here. And then pasting in the particular pod name. And we say tick tick bash. And now we're in the, the running container. And now we're in here. Let's just go ahead and run cat. That's a shadow. And all we have to do now to take a look at if a notice has been generated, let's go ahead and rerun that particular command to see if the log is generated. And we can see right here, hey, we opened a sensitive file by a non-trusted program. And that is the beauty of Falco. It's actually hard to slip by Falco. So hopefully that was quite informative and uh, I know it was kind of a quick example, but if you'd like to learn more, always check out the blog. And until next time, cheers, Robbie.